So thank you again. Then we're going back to the module number two, introduction to the DTA light uh, or DTA modeling principle. So I would like to go, go over the modeling framework, the agent-based routing, the uh, different how to specify the different value of time distribution, and also the different traffic traffic flow simulation modules. So if you recall that in the last session, we would like to uh, use the Nesta package. So I have the Nesta package in my desktop here. So when we try to use the Nesta package, uh, we always have this option, so which simulation model do we use? So suppose I open up a simulation package again. Okay, along those buttons, the most important button is start the the most important button is uh, this uh, a blue round button. Okay, so uh, you can from this uh, simulation pattern, you can try to see how the vehicles being simulated. So I need to move the cursor to the animation. Okay, you can see how these vehicles being simulated, and then how those results being displayed. You can try to pause, and uh, we, we don't run the simulation. You know, just, we just show the, the snapshot of the traffic simulation at this point. So now, now we uh, go to the another important element, run simulation. So the run simulation button is here. So after you run this, after you click on this pattern, we have the network summary. In this network, we have about 100 nodes, 300 links, 41 zones, 51 activity locations, the demand type, the demand type loading period, and uh, we have different traffic flow model and also the traffic signal representation. So a lot of users might ask me, what are the difference between point queue, spatial queue, or the kinematic wave model, so I would like to spend some time to describe those details with you. The users can specify the number of iterations in this dialog, and also they can just click on this wrong simulation. I don't perform here, but you can go ahead to run the simulation, and then to see how the simulation results are being performed. If you click on this wrong simulation, the if you click on this wrong simulation, what the, uh, the next step uh, will do is if you call the underline DTA light package, copy the DTA light setting, ESE, as I want to show you here. Go to this project, file in this menu. You go to the project folder. So what we do here is if you copy this DTA light EXE, and then run the detail like ESC inside this folder to read the input and to, to, uh, to generate the output. So that's why even I'm, I'm talking about the traffic flow simulation in the next few minutes, but I really hope you understand the DTA like package is a black box, is a black box engine with open source package available in the GitHub. The DTA like package, this DTA like package will read all the input file, okay, and then we are generate an output file along this way. So um, uh, even it looks like this is a little bit uh, sophisticated, but hopefully you can always be familiar with uh, the DTLI package running and then to, to make the simulation run, okay. Um, since in this demonstration package, in the demonstration workstation here, I might not have the perfect set up such as a uh, Windows 64-bit version parallel computing. I can just go, go, go ahead to give it a try if I run DTLI. And then, you know, they have some message. Then you just need to follow on this message to, to, to resolve the problem. Don't be free of asking the other users how to run the DTLI executable on this uh, fire, is, uh, fire exposure you know, environment. By running the detail like inside this data folder, we are happy to uh, avoid just being using uh, the Nesta as a 
user interface, you need to understand that DTLI is the core engine of this simulation package. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, uh, presentation. I would like to use the demonstration mill. So in the DTLI package, we have two major modules. Number one is the traffic simulation package, traffic simulation engine. The other is a short dispatch calculation. So as we can see, we generate the time dependent OD demand. We convert all the OD demand matrix, as I illustrated uh, previously. I have 30 or 30.1 chips to be converted to the agent or the 30 agents, 30 vehicles within this time period from zone 1 to zone 2 and then I feed all the agents from the different origin, different destination, different departure time into the simulation package inside here then I generate the link, traversal module, node transfer steps and then I can calculate the corresponding link travel time or I will say time dependent link travel time fit the link travel time into the shortest path calculation engine and then finally by using either user equilibrium pre-trip information, in rule information, different path selection rule and then feed the path all the way back to the simulation engine to do the simulation again in this very simple structure I, have, I hope I can help you understand the four major elements of our traffic uh, simulation engine number one from the OD demand matrix to the agent file. Number two, uh, we do the simulation on a node and a link layer. We don't do a lane based simulation. Number three, all the shortest paths is based on the time dependent travel time hour by hour, 15 minutes by 15 minutes, 15 minutes by 15 minutes from the traffic simulation engine. Number four, we have a set of the link selection rule for us to reselect it to reselect the shortest path iteration by iteration. Um, uh, we have some further you know, illustration, further uh, understanding uh, about the traffic assignment you might need to have, but uh, in this process, I just say, on day one, all the shortest paths will be used, all the agents are using the shortest paths. On day two, we update the uh, link travel time based on the simulation result, then um, another set of the agents will select the short, select the, the new shortest pass based on the simulation results. So, all the demand matrix, traffic simulation, shortest pass, the, the, the path selection rule day by day are the four major modern components I, I try to help you to understand. In the current uh, DTLI package, actually, we have two different assignment methods. The assignment methods can be classified into a zone-based assignment method. Eventually, we simulate the agents from the central eye to the central eye. You have a static travel assignment uh, network. Uh, another one is uh, agent-based simulation. With the agent-based simulation, when I have a zone-based representation, I will try to find out how many activity locations that I have. You have four or five activity locations and then I will distribute those agents into one of the activity location and then simulate this agent individually into the end uh, uh, activity location. Then in this case, all the vehicles have their own value of time, value of, inform value of information, departure time, and uh, the user can prepare this agent-based input from node to node these in all the detailed information to facilitate a much rich analysis. And uh, this agent-based simulation is particularly important for the tolling analysis or travel information provision study. So for an agent, one more time, I would like to just uh, say each agent has a mul multiple dimension of the travel decision, OD, departure time in minutes, path, demand type and uh, uh, information class. By using either demand class or the demand type, for example, when you try to uh, prevent the use of trucks, those heavy duty trucks, use the, uh, the CBD area, the central business area during the business, business hour, then you can try to 
at the tolls along the contour of a city to make sure only passenger car can enter into can enter into the the CBD during the peak hours or the business hour, and then those trucks will be rerouted to the other region, or they will be select the routes after the business hour. So when we try to enable this toll-based representation, here is a key concept. The, the shortest path calculation engine we use is based on a generalized cost. In this generalized cost form, we have the cost and the travel time times value of time, okay, plus the toll value. So eventually, this value of time, this value of time is uh, how many dollars or how many yuan per hour. For example, you know, a typical value of time is twelve dollars per hour in the United States. So what I do here is I have the travel time in ten minutes or in twenty minutes. I convert it to hour, and then I further use the value of time to convert it to a generalized dollar, and then use this generalized dollar plus the total value. I can try to, you know, enable the detail or precise calculation, precise calculation of my generalized cost. So by doing so, we can enable different value of time application, and consider high income and low income, and to consider. If you have any toll facility being implemented, how their uh, how their uh, uh, behavior being changed along this behavior along this uh, different VLT distribution. So now I would like to show you a typical value of time distribution uh, in the United States: twelve dollars per hour or fourteen dollars per hour is a typical value of time for traveling application. So typically, the value of time can be used as 50% of hourly rate. So you can see, uh, even I use a $12 value of time, this represents a $22 value of time in the hourly rate for this overall population. How do we specify the value of time in our simulation package? Let me just try to show a little bit details with you. Okay, you can go to the input demand type, this input demand type file. Open up this input demand type file. Okay, in this input demand type file, we have one, two, three, four. These numerical numbers representing the different demand type, and then. Yeah, type name. Okay, you can change these type names as you want because our simulation engine only recognizes the one, two, three, four uh, numerical values. Then you have value of V over T, AVG as average, V over T, these are ten dollars, twenty dollar, thirty dollar, twenty dollar as a different you know value of time uh, application. You can further distribute them into different Pre-trip information, in-route information, or different type of information. Uh, uh, if you have different value of time classes, you can further create many different demand types okay, to simulate the behavior of uh, uh, traffic uh, uh, desires. So related to, to related to this demand type coded in this input demand file, uh, into demand type file. We have the many other uh, uh, files being attached. Number one, go to the demand input demand file list. If you recall that here on this column, column K and the column L, these are number of demand types. These are demand type one. So this means for this file input demand. Input demand, I only have one demand type, one demand type. So the number of demand types is one, and then for the first demand type, this demand type code is one. Okay. If you some users change this to three, then I'm going to read this input demand matrix, then convert everything to the trucks. Recall that 
please record that in this input demand file. In this input demand file, essentially we have a matrix, right? O to D different chip. It does not have this demand type information. So that is why we use this input demand file list to specify the demand type, to specify the starting time, ending time, to further specify the departure time, to really generate this very enriched representation for the agent-based simulation. Okay, And then uh, this input demand file will be read it. Then we need to go to the uh, scenario tall representation. So let me go to the scenario. Okay, scenario link based tall is another representation related to the demand type. So I click on this link. Okay, so you can specify the link ID. You can specify the starting day, ending day, starting time in minutes, ending time in minutes, then the total value for the different demand type. Okay. For example, as we just know that, as we just know that, uh, the truck is a demand type three. Right. You can try to put nine 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 in this case, and then specify the other type of attribute. That by doing so, we are adding a link, preventing the use of trucks on this link. Okay. The user can manually input the data, but we strongly suggest the users to use the software package of Nesta to make the input. So you can go to the network. Okay. Going through this list, you will see the toll. Okay. Okay, I do not want to see this fancy display of the background map, so turn it off. Okay, and then on uh, one particular link, for uh, example here, I can try to select this link, make sure this link being selected. This is a select button, I select this link. Then you do a right click. Right click under this menu, under this layer, so we have a context sensitive menu. Then we can try to add a tool. Okay, add a tool. You can add HOV tool. HOV stands for high occupancy vehicle. Okay, HOT tool means you add a high occupancy tool, which means the passenger car, the single occupancy passenger car, should be able to pay the tool to use this facility. So let's try to add HOV tool. So by doing so here, you can try to see the uh, for this link for this scenario, the starting time, ending time, and uh, those are the total charge for using for the different type of users to use it. For example, uh, LOV, HOV, truck, input model, intermodal. You can delete these elements, delete this record. Okay, and then when you save the data, then we are able to really simulate this demand type specific tool in this application. Okay, so for many links, actually, for many for many links, they do not allow the use of tool or they do not allow the use of trucks in any time period. So then, uh, by 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 doing so, to doing so, to doing so here, you need to go back to the input link to perform these uh, changes. So, uh, on the input link, on colon n, you have this demand type code. You can try to add the demand type code as one, two. So when you add this particular code one and two, this means I'm going to only allow the demand type one, the demand type two, to use this particular vehicle. Which means for the demand type three, which is a truck, they are not allowed to use this uh, link uh, in any case. Okay. So, so as we try to uh, illustrate this concept with you, we use the demand type. We define the demand type in the demand type file. 
and uh, you can specify the conversion of demand matrix into the input demand file list and then you can try to specify the, uh, the, the, the demand type sensitive tooling in the scenario tool CSV file and then if you want to prevent the use of the trucks or particular vehicle type throughout the network then you can try to use the demand type code in this input link uh, to, 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 to accomplish this purpose. And uh, uh, as a output, if you look at the output chip, okay, we always have this demand type attached for each agent. Okay, so then we going back to this simulation module. Uh, in the traffic simulation module in DTA Lite, we have the BPR travel time based uh, travel time calculation. We have the point queue, we have the spatial queue, which is uh, similar to the Dynas Dynasmart uh, representation. We have the news model, even as it is similar to the cell transmission model, but I have to declare that the newest simplified kinematic wave model actually is a link based uh, representation. Using the link based representation, you do not need to cut a long link into the small cells. You can use the planning network as is to use the link to, uh, to, to, to enable a large scale traffic simulation. Okay, let's try to see how we can enable a newer simplified kinematic wave in the DTA line setup. Consider we have a link with one, two, three, four, four lanes. So even when you look at this uh, representation, we have these four lane structure. Uh, we have these four lane structure uh, uh, with all the different vehicles distributed across different lanes. But inside the detail line, we still model them as a single pipe with outflow capacity, with the entering queue, the exit queue. This is exit queue is the detail line simulation implementation with the inflow capacity. And with the engine list. So typically, if you look at the outflow capacity and the inflow capacity, uh, first of all, we need to calculate this outflow capacity and the inflow capacity based on the number of lanes. If you go back to the input link file, the outflow capacity is specified with two elements, number of lanes and also lane capacity in terms of vehicles per hour per lane. So forgive me to switch a little bit because I want to make sure all the users understand the detailed representation. So if I go to the input link, okay, you will see we have this lane capacity colon. The latest uh, detail line package use a lane capacity, lane CAP, and also we have number of lanes. So these two Columns G and I, G times I, then we can get the corresponding, then we can get the corresponding uh, link capacity or link capacity representation. Another major element is a, this a storage capacity. This storage capacity is the number of vehicles we can hold inside the link. And then this storage capacity in the DTA light is represented uh, by the jam density. So if you go back to the if you go back to the input link, you will see we have this jam density, the colon L as the number of vehicles we can hold per link per mile. More precisely, it should be number of vehicles we can hold per lane per mile. So we can hold we can hold 200 and 20 vehicles per lane per mile in this facility. Typically for the freeway session, uh, uh, 200 and 20 
because per mile per lane is a normal value. Then for the arterial street, then could be 100 or could be 180. You know, it's a is a relatively small smaller value. Okay, in newest model, particularly on the freeway intersection or freeway session, we need to simulate the vehicles according to the flow density relationship. So we have this free flow speed, jam density, backward wave speed. I would like to illustrate, if you can see the mouse, this is a flow rate. The highest point is a capacity. The largest point here is a jam density. So this slope is the speed limit. And then this is a corresponding speed under the congestion region. Okay. In the DTA light, we use the QK relationship in the Dana Smart, which is another uh, classical traffic simulation mod module, or the Dana uh, MIT, they use the speed density relationship. These are density, these are speed. So you can see side by side, this is 60 miles per hour as a speed limit. Then this is a 60 miles per hour as also the speed limit. And then this is the uh, triangular relationship. And then this is the flow density relationship for the same uh, portion of the segment. So why do we need to use this uh, cumulative, uh, this uh, uh, kinematic wave model? Because in the kinematic wave model, we can clearly see this is a backward wave Q, the shape, or this the back of the uh, backward wave is a constant line. So this enables a very efficient calculation of backward wave calculation. Okay, let's try to see how the Q is propagated along the uh, congestion. So first of all, I uh, have inflow, I have outflow capacity. With this is a four lane facility. Suppose I have 200 vehicles per lane per hour as my lane capacity. Then in total, I have uh, uh, 8,000 vehicles per link as my outflow capacity. But what if I do not have enough uh, uh, downstream capacity along this way, and then the Q spill back will be happened. And then this, uh, if I have a fully congested link, this upstream node will be propagated, and uh, I would like to use this process to show you. I check the outflow capacity, I check the inflow capacity and the storage capacity on the downstream. I try to do the node transfer. Okay, and then if I could not do the node transfer, and then these vehicles will stay as an execute of the upstream link. And then, if you have many vehicles along the backward wave, along the backward wave, and also on this link, if I accumulate too many vehicles along the backward wave, and then this second link will be also uh, congested, and then this queue will be further propagated to another upstream segment. Okay. So as we described in the session 1.0, the merge model is quite complicated. So we need to distribute the inflow to the uh, uh, incoming main line. So in this process, I have four main line, one on ramp, and then I need to calculate this uh, 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 inflow capacity discharge uh, model to discharge this, to distribute it, this inflow capacity to the different upstream links. So suppose I have my inflow Capacity is 4,000. Suppose I have, uh, uh, for example, 5,000 vehicles come in. I have another 1,000 vehicles come in. So 4 plus 1 is 5. Uh, 5 is uh, greater than 4. You know, if you do this a simple calculation, then you know you need to really distribute this capacity to the upstream sessions. So since in this small example, we have four lanes and one lane as a ramp, then we just look at the number of lanes as a way to discharge, to distribute it, this uh, uh, inco incoming capacity and uh, to discharge the queues from the upstream segments to the downstream segment. How about on the off-ramp? 
On the off-ramp, we can use a different merge model or diverge model, and then there's many complicated conditions. For example, in if you have a regular traffic, if the merge model is if the merge model is uh, uh, implemented using a first in first out fashion, first in first out means uh, you have to make sure all the vehicles being discharged first uh, if they arrive earlier, and then then you may have many extreme bottleneck. For example, in this case. Uh, I have many vehicles waiting on this lane, being discharged. Since I use a link-based representation, I only maintain a single queue, a single queue in this link model. If I use a first-in, first-out uh, principle, if this off-ramp is congested, and all the links upstream will be congested because you use a first in first out as a one vehicle cannot get out all the vehicles on this link cannot be uh, uh, get out from this traffic jam so in this case in our DTA light representation the default setup we do not use the first in first out at this critical uh, bottleneck or this critical uh, off uh, segment if you have more information you can do the calibration so for the signalized intersection, we do have an effective green time, saturation flow rate, or movement-based capacity. We relax the inflow capacity, uh, or try to really have a better representation you know, to facilitate a fast representation. But if you look at this time axis, cumulative flow count, this arrival rate, so essentially we still use this uh, uh, on the Effective green time, we discharge the vehicles according to the saturation flow rate. And then we, at the red time period, we close all the capacity. And then we have green time again, red time again. And then along this line, you can see uh, during this time period, during this time stamp, those are the vehicles waiting to be discharged in this uh, uh, section. Okay, uh, we also have more complicated uh, uh, offset timing plan into a uh, phasing plan. We will discuss uh, those details in other session. Thank you.